Welcome to the Diversion Authority Finance Committee meeting for September 22nd. Uh, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Here. Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mr. Peterson. I'm here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Mr. Costin. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Mr. Redlinger. Here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mayor Carlson. Here. Mr. Reitz. Here. The quorum is present. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is to approve the minutes of the August 25th meeting 2020. One, they have been distributed. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Steen. Is there a second, please? Second. Uh, Kent Costin seconds. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the August 25th meeting. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item number three is to approve the order of the agenda. The agenda has been distributed and printed, uh, it, 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 and it is online. Move to approve the order of the agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Steen. Is there a second? Second, Carlson. Jacobson, Thank second. you. Second by Mayor Carlson. All, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries to approve the agenda as distributed. Item number four is the approval of the bills. Mr. Kent Costin, City of Fargo. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, short list uh, this month, there's only three items on the list. I think they're self-explanatory. The largest being on St. Twitchell, the, the legal cost. So a total of 187699 dollars and 76 cents for approval. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Are there any questions of Mr. Costin? Don, would you please call the roll for the approval of the bills? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mayor Carlson? Aye. Mr. Reitz? Aye. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Uh, bills have been approved. Item number five is the finance report. Again, we call on Mr. Costin, City of Fargo. Uh, yes, if you refer to page 11 on the packet, uh, the cumulative financial report. The uh, spend for the fiscal year 2021 is $85,111,879 and a cumulative project to date spend of $731,348,704. Moving on to page 12, on the balance sheet side, you can see an accumulation of cash uh, in the uh, grand total column on the bottom right of $99,870,139. Um, if you move on to page 13, you can see that the uh, budget to actual with regard to the spend is at about 40% of budget, so we're clearly well under budget with regard to uh, the overall. So that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Anyone from the Finance Committee have any questions for Mr. Costin? Mr. Steen. I move to approve the finance report. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? Peterson second. Thank you, Commissioner Peterson. Uh, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Costin? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. Mr. Pepcorn? Aye. Mayor Carlson? Yes. Mr. Reitz? Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Uh, next order of business is the Executive Director's Financial Report. Mr. Paulson. Thank you, Chairman Dardis, members of the Finance Committee. Um, so we'll start out here, typical overall status. Uh, total program spend expenditures to date of uh, $731 million. Um, you can see here um, our expenditures this year are, have been confined to uh, to just a few different areas. 
Um, everything's still uh, looking good under budget. Um, in fact, we're uh, projecting to come in under um, budget this year by uh, probably about $50 million or so. So um, so at this point, it's uh, just kind of monitoring um, the ongoing contracts and activities that are, that are taking place. Um, you can see, it, obviously, again, um, this year, our biggest expenditures is in the lands and impacted property mitigation. And we've expended 31 million uh, to date um, of the $70 million budget. I'll move to level two detail uh, and just kind of go through this uh, pretty quickly here because there isn't anything too um, surprising within these numbers. So um, kind of move to the next page here. And you can see we did break out um, at the direction of the Finance Committee last month. We broke out the uh, settlement agreement payment and listed it as R Richland Wilkin County JPA. Um, so we're allocating that $35 million payment to, um, to that line item. Um, and then uh, you can see City of Fargo in town work. Um, we've expended about 8.8 .8 million. So there's still quite a bit of work left to do in town this year. Um, uh, so that's uh, that's kind of progressing along as well. And then, uh, of course, our, P our program support services with our management, legal, finance, and procurement still on track uh, for meeting our budget this year. Um, tracking very well with the, with the timing of where we're at. And, uh, and then we have diversion authority operations there. We did break that out as well. So that's the administrative budget. Um, and uh, that is uh, tracking well below um, what was anticipated. And we even broke out that administrative budget further uh, at the direction of the last finance committee meeting. So um, any comments related to this would be welcome. Uh, we pulled out salaries, benefits, office, and then others would be um, office supplies, events, uh, uh, travel, transportation um, related costs. So, um, so Mr. Chair, that is uh, my financial report this month. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Questions, Mr. Uh, Mayor Mahoney. Joel, I just have a question. You're planning on a trip to Washington next week with the team. Where does that come out of on these expenses? Is that out of your administrative budget, or can, does that come out of somewhere else? I, I don't know the answer to that, though, Joel. That'll come out of the pro, the project budget, not the administrative budget. Oh, okay. Yep. You'll have to tell Kent where to put it then. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we will work on that, so. <laughs> Are there any additional questions? Please, Mr. Costin. I, I just had a comment on breaking out the, the administrative costs. Um, I wondered if it should be footnoted that in the master indenture of trust that that budget is capped. And I think, uh, I don't know the exact formula. We got a lot of headroom in the budget, but I just think for the sake, if this is gonna be a permanent report, we should solidify the thought that it is a capped budget. If you just put a footnote on there, I think that would be helpful for people that review the report. Otherwise, we could potentially go over the cap and not be uh, cognizant of that compliance requirement. And by the cap, you mean 1.6 million, right? I, I don't. What, is that what it is? 1.6 yep. million. Okay. It, it's 1.6 million, and then it escalates on an annualized basis by an inflationary rate. Inflationary yeah. cost. Yeah. I think it would be appropriate to footnote it. Thank you, Mr. Carson. Mr. Paulson, would you make a note of that, please? Absolutely. Any other comments or suggestions, questions of Mr. Paulson? The Executive Director's Financial Report is for information only. There's no actionable item on that. Item number seven is contracting items. Mr. Paulson. I uh, thank you, Chairman Dardis and members of the Finance Committee. We have three uh, contracting actions for your consideration today. Um, I think we'll just uh, maybe take the... Uh, Take them one by one here. Uh, so the first one is uh, task order number five, amendment seven for program management services. Uh, this is a contract with CH2M Hale Jacobs uh, for the remaining work during implementation and construction of the diversion channel. Uh, so this is specifically related to the administration of the P3 contract. Um, right now it's uh, set up as a period of performance date of December 31st, 2026. And then the scope was updated to 
um, match the changes made in the technical requirements in the P3 RFP agreement. Um, and since we closed on that agreement, um, we know what sort of services need to be provided by the PMC to administer the contract. Um, so I'll maybe just stop there and uh, take questions on this one since it is a large uh, Question task Question, Mr. Order. Paulson? I didn't have one. Please, Mr. Costa. Yeah, uh, Joel, I noticed as I was reviewing the, the details of those components and subcomponents, the changes aren't major from period to period, but there was one category, it was called resiliency and sustainability, and it was programmed at about 316,000. I'm not familiar with what that term means and why that would be included in the budget for, I think, for next year. For our the sustainability resiliency component of the yes. Jacobs contract, yes, yeah. So that would pertain to the work that uh, their subcontractor Luceo is doing related to Envision on the project, um, and uh, that would uh, that would be contained within the task order. However, we wouldn't move forward with um, initiating that work without formal direction to Jacobs. Um, so right now, uh, you know, they're doing a lot of work related to the federal funding component, and we'll be going to um, D.C. next week with a contingent of board members, as, as the mayor had mentioned. Um, and they've been you know, providing us a lot of content to give to legislators and to the agencies related to um, the infrastructure bill that's currently being considered, as well as I'm happy to report today that the continuing resolution passed uh, Congress as well, and that did contain an additional $3 billion for the core civil works program, of which $1.5 billion will go to uh, the Hurricane Irma um, relief. The other 1.5 billion will go into the construction account. So that combined with um, the uh, the dollars being considered within the infrastructure bill is somewhere around 13 billion dollars of additional funding into the core work plan. Um, so it's very important that we're meeting the funding requirements of of that. And a lot of that has to do with resiliency, sustainability. Um, uh, climate mitigation, those sorts of things. So the resiliency program is supporting our efforts to achieve that, those federal funding dollars. Um, and so that's why we have included that within the, uh, the ongoing program management services. Because the core appropriates on an annual basis, we're anticipating having to um, go back for the remaining money year over year uh, in order to receive the appropriations for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah, and I wasn't questioning the expense. I was just, for my own educational purposes, what exactly it was for, just as a reminder, and I'm starting to recall actions taken in the past to fund that. So it's just a good reminder that we got somebody documenting the system. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Mayor Mahoney. No, this is a $30 million item, so my presumption is you as chair have looked at this with Rick as well in more detail because the detail in the packet's not a great amount of detail, but uh, Commissioner Dardis, I, or Mayor Dardis, I assume that you and Rick have done this some great detail with, with the team? We went several levels. I can't say we went to level seven, but we did, yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, for the other members on the commission or on this uh, committee, you know, it's a significant uh, look at it, but it also is running with what we had anticipated over time as well. So it's not larger or smaller than we expected. Is that correct on budget, Rick? Correct. Okay. It, it's what we anticipated in our budget? Yes. Okay. Thank you. If, if I may, one, one question on, on this and kind of relation to that, there's a discussion here, and I, I talked to Paul earlier, so I'm clear on this, but on the page one of that uh, descriptions towards the bottom of this is this is a cost increase amendment of 30 million to 36 kind of caught my attention and it's really a, a, a budgeted item it's not an item that was in the program cost but not yet budgeted as I understand it right so when it says you know this is a cost increase of 30 million it definitely got my attention but that's not what it is so, as, if I'm correct you are correct Commissioner okay. Steen yes <laughs> yeah we we have not touched uh, the contingency yet uh, for the project. And one other question. Uh, please, please. Mayor. 
So when this event started and Joel, you took your position, part of it was that we were looking at different ways to save money for the project. And uh, Hill Jacobs' uh, mission or what they were providing for the diversion initially was one bu bucket. Has that mission changed over time? So if I would look at a budget, let's say two or three years ago, would it still be 30 million or would it be a different number that we'd see? Because you've hired Chris, you've hired other people. Have you set in motion some things that actually saved us money? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, we have. So as we've been hiring staff, um, we have been transferring appropriate scope over to those staff members. Uh, however, I think some of the duties of staff are related to the public side of administration that just couldn't have been accomplished by the PMC anyhow. Um, specifically, I'm talking about maybe the work that Mr. Redlinger and um, and Mr. Wilson had been doing as the co-executive directors, the work that Mr. Costin does um, and Mr. Monplaisure had done at the county. Some of that transferred over to, to the scope. Um, as far as this amendment is concerned, it, it, it doesn't really apply to our public side staff. This was always been contemplated for Jacobs to administer the P3 contract because uh, the public side staff just doesn't have the experience in administrating a P3 contract. So Jacobs is bringing in folks that have done the, this type of work before. They know how to do it, what to check for, what to look for. Um, and that was always been contemplated. So I believe, Mayor, if we did go back um, and look at what the uh, budgeted, um, anticipated budget was, it would still be the, the 30 million that was contained within. The, um, the support data for task order 05 amendment 7 is uh, 17 pages long and there's a lot of detail on it and the like but uh, we did go through that very thoroughly mayor yeah yeah we had a number of sessions with uh, chairman dardis and and mr um and commissioner steen um and they uh, they really asked a lot of good questions if you can imagine so <laughs> uh, we did dig pretty deep into it um i also had personal uh, meetings with jacobs as well and went through um, prior to uh, meeting with them to ensure that everything met expectations well, as well. I'm disappointed that Commissioner Steen didn't save us 30000 but I'll have to move to approve. <laughs> well, all right, I'll take these actionable items well, one at a time. At that. I have a motion uh, to second. approve uh, the Jacobs Task Order 05 Amendment 7. Do I, is there a second, please? Second. Commissioner Steen seconds. Been moved and seconded. Ron, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dorrance. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Continue, please, Mr. Paulson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the second contracting action is a master service agreement for ne with Neon Loon Consulting. Um, this is related to uh, support services for our communications department. Um, Neon Loon is a is a company that was um, responded to an RFP that we did, um, and so we did receive multiple RFPs. Uh, we assessed. The, uh, the capabilities um, and determined that Neon Loon would be the best value to support our communications department. Um, and this is kind of related to the request of the board and the finance committee earlier this year to go through an RFP process to ultimately land on a, on a communications support consultant. Uh, so right, right now we're not prepared to bring forward any task orders, um, but we would like to get the master service agreement in place um, and um, run a, I'll run a very small administrative task order to just start to try them out and see how they fit with the, with the, uh, um, with the, with the public staff, um, and then bring more of a robust um, uh, um, task order that would support FY22 next year if everything works out okay. So. Mayor Mahoney. Joel, is this a substitution for PR for good? Will, will this be the different group that's taking over for PR for good? Uh, that is correct. And a local contractor? That is correct. They are local. 
Move to approve. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a second? <laughs> Jacobson seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, been moved and seconded to approve the Neon Loon Master Services Agreement as presented for the Neon Loon. Uh, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Mr. Paulson. All right. In the third contracting action for the board's consideration today is uh, change order number seven for work package 43G. Um, this is work that Industrial Builders is doing um, out in uh, the Oxbow Wetland Project, I believe. And uh, in, in there was some additional fill that was required within an area that had unsuitable uh, material. Uh, and so we uh, um, are asking for, uh, or the contractor is asking for a change order of approximately 77,000 for, for additional fill. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Questions for Mr. Paulson? Move to approve. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Is there a second, please? Popcorn second. Thank you, Commissioner Pipcorn. Been moved and seconded to approve the industrial business uh, change order uh, for the tune of seventy-seven thousand eight hundred and forty dollars. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. That is everyone. And Mr. Chair, I'll just uh, make a note that uh, there were no cash budget adjustments this month. Um, so we, uh, as discussed at the last finance committee meeting, we will start to report out if we make any budget adjustments between uh, categories, but there were none to report out this, this month. So. All right, thank you. Item number eight is other business. Uh, first order of business is the uh, draft of the 2022 cash budget. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so this this was provided in your packet. Um, not sure if the committee would like to go line item by line item. I will start out to to mention that we have done extensive work with uh, 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 Chairman Dardis and Commissioner Steen on each one of these uh, line item, uh, uh, and and we've dug into any questions that they had. Um, and so I think maybe we'll just take it large the large categories first and then just see if there's any questions mr chair that might be the the best way to to approach it or... very good thank you mr paulson okay any of the finance committee members have a questions on the, this is again i will remind you this is a draft only it's for information at this meeting we're not approving this uh so i'll have some more time to study it if 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 that's what you choose to do but we take any questions at this time Most of the questions that um, Commissioner Steen, and I don't need to speak for him, obviously, but we're on land acquisition and mitigation as to how uh, the, the, what the 2021 budget is, what, what's projected for 2022, and, and those like. And then also on the in-town in flood protection, as you can see, you know, we've, there, there's some large dollars that have been uh, set aside for that. And there's about $8 million, I believe, that where we're, the city of Fargo is on there. And so we're, there's discussion about that, of how are those projects coming in and all that type of thing. And then the other item that was of major interest, and I'm going to ask Joel for, or uh, Paul, please, was the diversion channel and associate infrastructure. There was uh, considerably, considerable dis discussion on uh, the bridges and how we're going to handle BNSF on the payment of that and uh, whether or not there's going to be a payment, a lump sum payment for operations and maintenance going forward. So that was uh, that was a little bit uh, confusing, but get through it. Paul did a nice job. So, Paul, would you like to address that? Those are the major, major items that I uh, 
uh, that I noted during the discussion on it. As you'll see that the budget for 2021 is uh, $31,020,000 and uh, actual cost to date is 554,000. And so uh, the draft for 2022 is for 33 million. So please, Paul. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Within the channel construction and mitigations, that includes um, all of our utility relocations. And so the costs to date have basically just been the engineering for those costs. That's why you see the difference between the actual and the estimated at completion. We have a number of utilities that will be relocating for the channel that the diversion authority will be paying for. Those bills we expect to come in by year complete. And so um, that's where that $10 million is. There is about a $15 million estimated payment for operations and maintenance um, with the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway. Um, it's our experience with previous um, uh, coordination with the railroad that within their process of assigning uh, a permit to the diversion authority to build the bridges. Okay, so we are going on to their property to make an improvement um, or make an adjustment to their facilities. So instead of uh, an at grade rail line they have now, we will be building a bridge. The cost for building the bridge is included in the P3. However, BNSF will want to own and maintain that bridge. So the cost of the maintenance of that, all the other bridges within the P3, we have that 30 year cost built into there. However, Burlington Northern, um, they typically request an operations and maintenance uh, kind of payment uh, for the permitting of their work. So basically they're gonna say, look, you've built a bridge, you've added to our infrastructure, we need some additional costs to cover the, the maintenance of these structures in perpetuity. And so they typically ask for that up front. Um, our estimate was be about a $5 million cost per location. We cro cross the uh, BNSF lines in, five, in three different locations. So that's, there's a, a $15 million that we had expected to spend this year, um, but with the slight delay and um, coordination with BNSF has been slower than anticipated due to some staff turnover there. Um, we don't anticipate that being signed this year. And so there's $15 million that were in the 2021 cash budget that are now basically sliding to the right into the 2022 cash budget. Thank you, Paul. Mayor, you had a question? Yeah, just a question, Joel. We see Oxbow uh, Hickson uh, continue to be on here, and I think you had a cost of uh, 42 million or something like that. Are we done with it next year? Is that, are we finally done with that? And then I'm a little curious, oh yeah, it's WP43 Oxbow Hickson Baki. It's 42, and then next year we're going to spend an additional uh, million or so on it. Is that all that's left? If we look at, and you may not have this today, but if we look at overall cost of that sometime, could we have a report of what Oxbow cost us overall? Because I see you have 42 million, but I was under the awareness it was 100 million or something. Yeah, that's uh, for the construction. Um, as you can see, cost to date, 2684, 824, that's the construction and MOU costs. Um, we still have about 14 million worth of uh, ring levy to complete around there. Uh, the core is actually building some of it, included that uh, portion of it within their um, I-29 road race. So there is some additional work that we have to do there uh, for construction. The overall cost, um, we can pull that in uh, when you start adding you 
uh, utility costs, relo uh, relocation costs, um, lands, um, lands and other residential relocations uh, work that way. Um, it probably will be over that uh, $100 million mark. Thank you, Paul. Anyone else on the Finance Committee have a question? Mr. Costin. Yeah, I had a question with regard to the detail of the channel construction. Just as a point of reference, is that all P3 payments or is that a, a combination of a variety of uh, subcontractors? So that's going to be uh, all related to utility relocates. So we are not anticipating making any payments to the developer um, next year. The, the way the milestone payments work is the projects partitioned into buildable units. So one buildable unit would be a bridge, say. So until that bridge is entirely complete, you don't make payment on it. So a majority of the milestone payments will be coming in later years as the developer completes buildable units and components of the diversion channel. Um, so uh, maybe not all of it, but uh, um, a majority of all of the diversion channel associated infrastructure is related to our obligation to the utility companies to pay for those relocates to get them below the channel grade. Yeah, and I kind of where I was going with my inquiry was at some point in time, it would, wouldn't it seem to make sense to segregate the, the P3 contract into this budget report so that you can see as these milestone payments start to occur sure. that we're in fact paying them and reporting them at that level because they are so significant relationship to the total project otherwise it's all mushed into the 950 million dollar program cost and there might be multiple things within that category and you know as fiscal agent we track those p3 payments and we'll be making them it might be helpful to have it broken out in the budget that way in the future yesterday at the diversion head uh, chairman's meeting we did discuss that and we discussed a number of other items as to how uh, Mr. Paulson, uh, Paul, and also Mr. Shockley, with all the different funding levels of how that's going to unroll, uh, unroll for us in 2022. And I've asked them at our October Finance Committee meeting that the, the three of them combined to give us a report as to how that will break down and how, uh, how it will be accounted for. So that is forthcoming. And I did have another question. This is more broadly speaking but with regard to the state appropriation i'm one of my staff people asked today when are they going to send us that big chunk of money <laughs> and, and i said you know i don't really know when i have a meeting today i'd be happy to ask is, is that something that is in the foreseeable future or do we know how that's going to be dispersed to us mr shockley stepped to the microphone and has a big smile on his face <laughs> so i'm assuming he has good news for us uh, great very timely question uh <clears throat> we are current we submitted a schedule of North Dakota PFA and Bank of North Dakota. Uh, we're envisioning that it will come in four draws. Um, North, the uh, North Dakota PFA did not want to have one large bond issue. They wanted to make sure that we would be able, as they bonded for it, we could spend it. And so we tried to build a spend schedule in which they would bond for it and we would be able to spend for it, spend it. So it'll be, and I don't have the specific numbers, but off the top of my head, I think the first tranche is about 90 million, the second tranche is about 80 million, the third one is about 70, and then the fourth, which would be in June of 2023, would be a little bit over 100. So. Thank you, that's very helpful. I'd like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Costin or any other member of the Finance Committee and if we're going to have another preliminary meeting before the October meeting uh, with regard to some of this discussion, uh, you know, at, at this point in time, it's been Mr. Steen and I, but we'd certainly make that call out to any and all members of the Finance Committee to certainly join us and, uh, you know, jump in on the questions as well. So, Mr. Chairman, could you try to make it soon that we know that, whatever your guys' schedule is, so we can yes, make we a certainly will. Our schedule? We got it. Um, so again, the, any other discussion on the draft of the 2021 uh, cash budget adjustments? Mr. Chairman, I just suggest, Joel, whenever you have a draft, it's a draft and it's outlined on your paper. Otherwise, it looks like a final product and 
we've been caught sometimes with is this a draft or is this a final draft. We did we did debate putting that on there, Mayor Mahoney, but wanted um, with the copies and overwrite of it, we wanted it to be clear for you to understand or to see underneath it. So um, we can do that. We'll we'll do that next time, at least on the top top line. But didn't want to obscure any of the figures. Thank you, Paul. Again, any additional questions on this information of our uh, cash budget? Item, okay, moving on. That's not an actionable item because it's only a draft. We'll go to item B, as the DA board approval of the MOU and agreement actions. Mr. Shockley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the Finance Committee. Today we have a number of MOUs and MERAs. Uh, the first is a MOU between the Pleasant Township and the Metro Flood Diversion Authority regarding the Southern Embankment and Associated Infrastructure. And I, I would say uh, congratulations goes out to Chris Bockyard. There's a ton of work that went in behind the scenes working with the township on this MOU. Um, this is particularly challenging and without having, just to be frank, without having like a public employee leading that charge, I, I'm not sure we would have gotten to the finish line on that because it was a it took a lot just to negotiate it out with the township. Um, <clears throat> we have a summary. Um, it really addresses the design, construction, operations, and maintenance uh, regarding construction of the southern embankment and associated infrastructure. Uh, the second MOU is an MOU between Castrol Water and the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. This is through the diversion channel. Um, we're starting to finish up the MOU is for some the remaining utilities along the diversion channel. Um, this really addresses the relocation of uh, Castrol Waters pipelines. Uh, they have large and small pipelines along the diversion channel. Um, as we're building, as the developers building the diversion channel, they'll have to cut off the old ones, put in new ones, and uh, reroute uh, and make sure that the connections are hooked up. Uh, there is an MOU for the Diversion Channel and Associated Infrastructure with uh, Sprint uh, and the Metro Flood Diversion Authority. Uh, this is, once again, regarded to relocating uh, the utilities on the Diversion Channel. And then finally, we have an MOU between Minkota and the Diversion Authority regarding the Southern Embankment. Once again, this is in regards to utility relocations uh, occurring in the Southern Embankment. I would note, note, uh, uh, notice that the uh, Minkota one is what we refer to as a MURA, and what that means is there's no cost directly with this agreement, but as utility relocations need to take place, the Diversion Authority staff works with Minkota. We've sort of set the ground rules. They come up with a task order and they relocate the different infrastructure. The reason that we do that is and the southern embankment is compared with the diversion channel. Uh, the core is constructing the southern embankment in a traditional manner, and so you have different work packages. And so we don't know all at once what utilities need to be relocated and when they need to be relocated. So the task order system was a more cost-effective way than having uh, us having to redraft a new contract every single time we had a utility relocation. Um, it's, uh, I would note this has been really good progress in getting these utility agreements wrapped up um, and it's, it's progress for the project. can answer any questions you might have. It's very routine, very similar to the utility agreements and MOUs that you've seen before. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Oh. Finance Committee will go by your direction if you want to. Uh, these are actionable items and so if you want to do them all at once or uh, one at a time. But move to approve all four of the action items. And Chris, good job with Pleasant Township. That's Thank you, Mary Mahoney great, moves. Is there great, a second? Uh, I know we are concerned about it, and it's really great to hear that you made progress with them. And although they seem pleasant as a township, sometimes I'm sure you had interesting meetings. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, break? Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the uh, uh, MOUs and agreement actions 
as outlined by Mr. Shockley, items one through four. Don, would you please call a roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order is the resolution authorizing the financial code. Uh, Mr. Shockley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the Finance Committee. It's my pleasure to uh, present to you the resolution authorizing financial close. Uh, the financial close for the P3 component of the project is now scheduled to occur on October 14th. I'll just briefly touch upon what does that mean? Uh, so we went through commercial close earlier in August, and that's in which we signed the project agreement. Uh, during the time period between commercial close and financial close, the developer assembles all of their private financing. Uh, and that is going to include a private uh, placement loan of about $700 million, uh, private bonds in the neighborhood of about $200 million, and then private activity bonds of, of about $296 million. Uh, during the, and so the developer goes out and secures its financing so that it has the money available at financial close to provide to its DNC contractor, the design and construction contractor. So internally within their team, they'll issue this debt and it's a fixed price contract within their team uh, and they go start construction as they, commit, as they complete buildable units and file a milestone payment, uh, we make the payment to them so the authority actually has infrastructure in the ground before you're actually making payment. Um, as part of uh, the sale of those obligations, we have a number of things going on. Uh, first of all, uh, we have an update to the financial model that the, uh, that the team submitted with its bid versus close. Uh, the benefit is that the financial model, because of our work with them, has reduced, it will, will reduce the availability payment that's due each year. Uh, and so that's a benefit to the authority. So we're amending the project agreement to substitute in that new financial model. Uh, the second item is authorizing Joel to execute what's called a, dis a continuing disclosure undertaking every year as part of the bonds that they've issued, just like a city or a county, there's certain disclosure requirements that have to be undertaken. Even though the authority's not issuing the bonds, obviously somebody who buys the bonds wants to make sure that the authority's paying its bills, that it's collecting the sales tax, et cetera. So every year we have to file a simple disclosure uh, next month, they'll talk about maybe potentially hiring a dissemination agent. They're very cost effective. We're having the fiscal agent do it. We can talk about that next month, but the resolution authorizes the signing of the continuing disclosure undertaking. Uh, the lender's direct agreement uh, was a document that was actually attached to the master indenture of trust. And so the lender's direct agreement sits um, in between the master indenture of trust and the developer's indenture of trust. So if you think about it, um, it's like the center of the hourglass or the spider web. Uh, we make our payments, they go through the lender's direct agreement, and then it goes to the developer, and the developer filters it through its waterfall and repayment of debt obligations. And so uh, you've already seen the lender's direct agreement and the master indenture of trust, but it just gives authorization for Joel to go ahead and sign that. Uh, the trustee has to sign it, the fiscal agent has to sign it. Everybody's seen the agreement, but just kind of the belt and suspenders. Um, uh, next week, we are going to begin uh, marketing of the developer's uh, debt obligations. So there's a process where it goes to market, uh, and we get bids. And during that time period, we'll get bids on the different maturities of the PAVS bonds. The authority is part of that and it's also part of the, the bond sale. And so there's a check and balance so to make sure that they're not overpricing, as Kent probably is more familiar with it than most, but you can, you can play around with premiums and maturities and take money out of a transaction. And so we have a check and a balance system built in the project agreement where uh, during the sale, we actually sit on 
the line with them. They pick a maturity, they sell it, we have to consent to it, and we go back and forth. And so there's a huge check and balance in the process. And then we have EY on the line to make sure that it's consistent with the financial model and consistent with the models that uh, we ran early on in the process. Um, once we have the sale results, uh, then we go through the typical closing process where we're uh, where the developer is finalizing all of their bond documents. And on the 14th, we'll have everything signed. And at some point during the day, we'll say the transaction's closed and there's it, uh, deals in place, so to speak. And so this resolution authorizes the executive director and the chair to sign the documents that are necessary to get through financial close. I can certainly answer any questions that you have. It, it's quite an in-depth process. Um, we kind of like to say it's like the duck swimming in the water. You see the duck, you know, gently going, but the legs are going 90 miles an hour. That's kind of how the financial close has been. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Questions? Uh, this is part of the reason that I, uh, Rick and I are, had asked Joel and John and, and uh, Paul uh, at the next meeting that we have some discussion on the, the change management process, the contracting process for the P3, uh, the ring, uh, risk allocation, and the payment process because the milestone point payments have gone away. We got 57 units, but there's also availability payments, which I really don't understand. And well, hopefully Mr. Shockley or Mr. Paulson can, can share that better with us. And then maintenance and operations. I reached out to Mr. Costin recently uh, last week, and he provided us some additional information on uh, sales tax information of collections for Cass County and Fargo based on the 1.5% growth is what we anticipated versus the actual. It's a very positive report. We'll wait till next month and I'll, uh, Mr. Costin, if you uh, update that and we'll let you share that report, but it's very positive. And the reason that I asked that question is Mr. Shockley had made a comment uh, months ago to me at one point in time with regard to maintenance and operations and how we might apply, uh, how we're gonna service that debt on maintenance and operation based on what our sales tax collections are. And so I think that when Mr. Shockley gets ready to present that to us, it's very important that we know the, the facts of what Mr. Costin has shared with, uh, with me last week. So it'll all come together. So that's uh, anything else for you, John? Uh, any questions for John? Um, maybe just a clarification point um, on the availability payments. So we currently with the closed project agreement, you have, we already have in place what our availability payments are. With the change in the financial model, we're going to lower those availability payments. And the availability payments, as a rough split, the milestone payments, so we'll just say that, say the P3 agreement is a billion dollars. There's about 60% is in milestone payments and about 40 to 45% is in availability payments that spread over the 30 year period of the project project agreement after substantial completion. And so what happens when we're, why it's so important on that PAB sale is the more savings that we can gain, uh, it starts to lower your availability payment. And so the interesting part about a P3 transaction is sometimes you can save more on the commercial side than on the construction items. And so that, that's why we have such an important check and balance system. On the operations and maintenance side, that's not going to change. We already have our operations and maintenance availability payment that was part of the bid that developer gave us. And, but that just covers the channel. And I think there's a, a larger discussion about the whole operations and maintenance for the entire project, the Southern Embankment, the in-town works. Um, there'll be some operations and maintenance costs incurred as part of the uh, um, uh, AMP plan, and I'm forgetting what AMP stands, Adaptive Management and Mitigation Plan. There's a, there's a number of other operations and maintenance items that uh, we're getting more clarity around. And I think by the end of the year, we'll be able to take some of those numbers and we'll have a much better, clearer picture of the, what the final operations and maintenance costs looks like, um, both from the, we know what the P3 side is, but the entire project. There's still gonna be some unknowns, but through this process, it's, you know, we're slowly, slowly getting closer and closer to what the final numbers are, so. 
Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Mayor, do you have something? Mr. Shockley, I'm only disappointed that you didn't show us where's Waldo, where you show where all the money moves, goes to Bank of North Dakota, comes over here in your big spreadsheet. So I hope you'll have that ready for tomorrow. But uh, I very much want to congratulate you on, your, on this work. I think you also said we saved some money as well. So there is additional funding that we'll get back to the project because of your hard work. I uh, appreciate all that. And the second thing I want to do is appreciate all the people in the community that are spending money because both the county and the city are seeing higher tax returns than we expected. And we wanted to do the one and a half, but we're, we're much higher right now, going at a much higher rate. I would move to approve the financial closed document. Is there a second, please? Peterson, second. Thank you, Commissioner Peterson. John showed me his diagram one time, and this is what it looks like. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Don, would you please call a roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Reitz. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Mr. Shockley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, one just quick update, a, a good piece of news. Uh, as part of the bond sale for the, the developer and private placement, we were able to secure a third party opinion that designated the uh, product as what's called green bonds. Um, and green bonds are marketed to investors that are looking for bonds that are sustainable and resilient. Um, and there's a, you end up paying a slightly lower interest rate than you would with a typical bond because people want that as part of their investment portfolio so that they can say they're a green investor. Uh, it's not a huge interest savings. It's maybe f six, seven basis points. But when you're talking about the scale of the debt, it, it adds up over time. So it, just another kind of positive, positive item. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Mr. Paulson. I just want to make a note to the Finance Committee that I do have a position um, uh, out on the market right now for a finance director, and uh, that's with the intent to try to keep up with John. So, um, <laughs> as you can see, it's, a, it's certainly necessary. Uh, a lot of moving parts going on here, and uh, I think uh, Mr. Dardis's graph is uh, absolutely accurate uh, as far as our financial arrangements concerned. So, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Paulson. Uh, Next order of business is property acquisition status report. Uh, Mr. Dodds is traveling. We have Dean Better with us today. Mr. Better. Thanks, Finance Committee. Good afternoon. Um, this is our usual <clears throat> property status overview for your uh, review, I guess, today. Um, I'm going to stop on this page real quick. A uh, couple of changes from the last one that you've seen. Um, we have signed an additional purchase agreement there. Um, in the last month, and we actually have a few others that have signed in the meantime as well that didn't make this report. Um, acquisitions, um, maybe one back here, Don? Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, seven parcels that we've acquired there um, in, the, uh, in the green that have been acquired since the last month, and then one maybe good thing to report, the very bottom red Darker red is the acquisition via last resorts. We did actually have two parcels that we acquired, and those were from the channel that we did reach an agreement on as well. So that uh, added to our acquired status as well. Um, there's a various, on the following pages, uh, environmental monitoring and much more detail behind each one of the sub-projects. And um, we'll probably just hold off on going over that unless someone has a specific question on any of those. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Better. Questions? of lands or property acquisitions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, any member of the Finance Committee have anything that they'd uh, go to the order? Mr. Paulson? Mr. Shockley? All right. Our next meeting will be October 27th. Uh, look forward to seeing you all. Thank you for your time today. We stand adjourned.